Hello guys and welcome back to the show. In today's video, I would like to talk about type classes and why they are very useful pattern in Scala. Type classes are a powerful feature of Scala that allows us to extend existing libraries with new functionalities without using the traditional inheritance pattern that we see in object-oriented programming. What do I mean by this? Assuming I have a trait called HTML writer, like so, and I have a method inside of this HTML writer called convert to HTML. So I'll create a method which is not implemented. So convert to HTML and this will return a string. Okay. In traditional inheritance pattern that we see in object oriented programming, if I want to get the features of the parent class of the parent trait, if I want to get the features of the HTML writer, what I will tend to do is to create something like final case class and this case class I'll call it person this person will have a name which is a string then I'll have an age which is an integer then this will extend HTML writer okay since I didn't implement the convert to HTML method inside of the trait what I need to do is to implement it in the final case class so I will say def convert to HTML which will return a string, then I can return something like age, like so. So what I have here is that I've created a trait which has a method which hasn't been implemented that returns a string, and I've got a case class person that extends the HTML writer. So this is what you probably see in traditional object-oriented programming when you want to inherit the features of a parent class. So now, if I say person, then I pass it a name called Ben, then I pass it an age, let's say eight. I can print out, let me call this person one, and I can say person one dot convert to HTML. And if I do run this, I get the name is Ben and the age is eight. Now this works, but it has a number of drawbacks. We are restricted to having just one way of rendering a person. And secondly, this pattern can only be applied to classes that we write ourselves. If we decide to render java.util.date or convert java.util.date to HTML, what we have to do is to write another functionality to do this. And we don't want that. We are functional programmers and we can do better. So there are a number of drawbacks, as I mentioned. So we know that traditional polymorphism has failed us in this scenario. We cannot use traditional polymorphism to, to do this. Um, someone might say, why don't you use pattern matching to do this? Okay, we can try using pattern matching. What I'm going to do is to create a method called convert to HTML. So I'll say def convert to HTML. Okay. And what this convert to HTML will do is that it will take something, but there is a problem. I'll talk about the problem now, and then it will turn a string. The problem now is that I want to be able to convert anything to HTML. I want to convert a string to an HTML. I want to convert java.util.day to HTML. I want to be able to convert a person to HTML. I want to be able to convert a string to HTML. So I'll have to put any over here in order to be able to, you know, pass anything to this function and be able to convert that to HTML. And I can say that that's something match. If that thing is a person and it has a name and an age, what I want you to do is to do something over here. If the person, if that thing that you are matching is a date, I want you to do something over here. If that thing is anything, then I want you to, let's say, throw an exception or do something else. But as you can see, there are a number of drawbacks to this approach as well. The first problem is that with this approach, we lose type safety. We do not know what a person is passing to our function and we lose control of, you know, tracking what the person is passing. And that is not what we want because as Scala developers, one of the advantages that we get as Scala programmers is that we have safety. We, we, we can check what type is being passed to our function and we want to always have that so that we can make our application safe and catch errors at compile time rather than um, at runtime when we deploy something to production. So we lose type safety if we use this, uh, this approach. And another problem that I can see from looking at this function is that anytime you want to convert something or convert another type into HTML, we need to modify this case class. So for instance, if I have a final case class, animal that has 
a color, which is of type string, and it has an age, which is of a type int. If I want to convert this case class or this animal type to HTML, what I'll have to do is basically modify this, this pattern matching, to modify the structure of what I'm matching. I'll have to say case animal, do something. But that's not what we want as Scala developers. We can do better. So this is where type classes come into play. It will help us or it will allow us to express the animal class, the person class, and the java.util.date or any other type to act like HTML writer. This is a very important point. So what type classes does is that it will allow us to express all these types, okay? So the person type, the animal type as HTML writers. And this is what we call ad hoc polymorphism. So rather than using traditional polymorphism, we are using ad hoc polymorphism. We are making our types, so animal, act like HTML writer. We are making the person type act like HTML writer. We are making the java.util.date type act like HTML writer. And this is what we call ad hoc polymorphism. So now let's look at type classes. There are four components that make up type classes. Whoa, there are actually three. And the last one, you can decide to use it or not use it. But there are three main core components when using type classes. The first component when using type classes is one, the actual type class. Two, we need the type class instance. And then three, we need an interface using implicit parameter. And the last one is called an interface using enrichment and implicit. In this video, what I'm going to do is to cover these three scenarios. And then later on, we can see how we can use the fourth scenario as well. So how can we convert this into using type classes? We will say an A over here and then pass something of that a type and return whatever string that we want to return. So this is what we call the type class. So basically we have our trait, which can be any name that you want. And then the trait has to be parameterized. Now what we need to do is to create the type class instance. And I can do this by creating the person type class instance. Okay. So I'll create an object and I'll call it person type class instance. And this object will contain person instance, and I can say a new HTML writer and this HTML writer of type person. So what I'm going to do is to move this up here and get rid of this. So the person instance is a new HTML writer. When I say new HTML writer, this creates an anonymous class. Okay. So I've created a person instance, which is a new HTML writer of type person. And this will now have, or will now implement the method converts to HTML. So I'll have a converts to HTML, which will take type person because the person is the A and then I will implement this. Okay. I will return whatever string I want to return. So I can return whatever I want to return in here. So I can say H1 in a string, the name of the person, something dot name, something dot age. I can also have an instance of Java util.date. So I can say object. Let me just copy and paste this over here. Okay. Rather than saying person type class instance, I will say date type class instance. This date type class instance will have a date and it will take in the date. And then I can do date dot to string. So I have two instances right now. I have the instance of person and I have an instance of date. Let's look at what we've done so far. So, so far we've talked about type classes and we've said that a type class is a trait with at least one type variable. The type variable specifies the concrete type that the type class instance are defined for. And then the methods in the trait usually use that type variable as we've done over here. Okay. So this is the type class. This is the type variable. It is parameterized. It has a method over here and this type variable is being used inside of the method. So now that we have this, what we need to do is to have the interface that uses the implicit. And we can use this by saying def HTML writer interface that will take in a type and this type will have to be type A because we want to pass in a lot of type to this method and then use that to convert some things to HTML. But where do we get this A from? Well, we can parameterize this and say it will have a parameter A. So the A will be the type that we will pass over here. And then this will take an implicit called writer, which is of type HTML writer. And the type that we want is A. 
and then it will do something. We want to return a string. So we can say the writer dot convert to string, then we can pass it the type that we pass in here. If we decide to use this like so, so if I say HTML writer interface, then I pass it a type. So if I pass it person, as you can see, it says that there is no implicit found. So what I need to do is I need to make these implicit. I need to make this implicit, okay? So I can make this implicit by saying implicit person instance. Then I can say import person type class instance, like so. This should work. So if I come over here, let's see what the error is saying. Oh, okay, so this is because I haven't provided the parameters that I need to provide for the person. And as you can see, I need to provide a name and an age. So I will say Chris and then nine. So now if I do print out the HTML writer interface, what I should see, okay, so the reason why this is not working is because this method over here has been defined outside of an object. So I'll just copy this and then just paste this in here like so. And now if I run this and get rid of this, it should work perfectly. So now I have the name of the person is Chris and age is nine. As you can see, I can change this to date. So I can change this over here and let the interface be date and then provide it just the date like so. Then I can make this date implicit as well. So I can say implicit, then I can import this. And this has to be new date because I need to create an instance of date. So this has to be new date. So if I run this, I get the name is, okay, this is not the right thing to say. It says the name of the person is Sunday, January 3rd, but obviously it should be today is Sunday, January 3rd. So these are the core concepts of type classes in Scala. The type class pattern in Scala allows you to extend existing libraries with new functionalities without using traditional inheritance. And in order to implement this pattern, what you need is the actual type class, a type class instance, an interface using implicit parameter, and an interface using enrichment and implicit. I stated earlier that I was going to cover the first three cases, and then we can look at this later on another time. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know, and see you in the next video.